a video review of the novel Slumdog Millionaire by Vikas Swara. The novel Slumdog Millionaire by Vikas Swarup is definitely one of my favorites and a must read for audiences from youth to adult because it does deal with some concepts that are a little bit too mature for younger audiences such as rape and poverty. But all in all, Slumdog Millionaire definitely makes for a good read. The story, written by Vikas Swarup, follows Ram Muhammad Thomas, an 18-year-old orphaned, poverty-stricken boy who lived on the streets of India throughout the entirety of his life. He has just won a million dollars from the television show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And because he's won a million dollars, officials from the TV show and police accuse him of cheating and thus take him into custody where they torture him and try to get him to sign a form that says that he cheated when he really didn't. However, he's rescued just in time by a lawyer whom you'll find out later, is actually a long-lost friend of Ram's, and the lawyer saves him, takes him back home, and him and Ram, her and Ram, actually spend the night talking about how Ram came to know the answers to those questions, because the next day, she's, su she's supposed to rep uh, represent from the starting point of his life when he was left as an orphan in the church, to continue on to meeting all his new friends, living on the streets, life on the streets, going through corrupt orphanages and so on, to what, till the, till uh, reaching his current state right now, where he was contesting as who can be a millionaire. Ram goes through many ordeals, tragedies, and trials throughout his life, all of which correlate to the correct answer to the questions that he was asked and who wants to be a millionaire from the experiences that he had. All in all, I learned a lot from this book. Vikash did an amazing job teaching people how society is right now and how it needs to progress because there are problems in society. He explains how there is child prostitution currently going on in India through Ram's first love, um, who was a child prostitute from the age of 12. He explains how some corrupt orphanages in India are purposely and intentionally crippling children so that they can bring in more revenue from begging. And he goes on to explain how the class, about the caste system and how people who are lower in the caste in India are viewed as nothing. If you don't have money there, your worth is nothing below dirt. And this is really, these lessons I really take back from is that I see how savage our society still is, how much reform we still need to do. And that's really the main thing I took from it, is that we're not perfect. Our society is not perfect. But from this book, I learned that there is opportunity for us to grow. There is our ability to grow. We just need to take advantage of that. And that's what I think the real main lessons from what Picasso is trying to teach us are, is that our society is like a seed that can grow into a beautiful tree. But right now we're stuck in the dirt. Because no one's watering. The setting takes place in major cities of India, such as Mumbai, Delhi, and Agra, and it takes place 18 years ago to modern day times. There is influence caused by the setting in some cases during the story, such as when Ram worked as a tour guide in Agra, because if in the Taj Mahal, because if the Taj Mahal wasn't there, Ram would not be able to be as able to sustain himself in Agra financially and therefore he would not have been able to live there long enough to be able to answer to be able to discover the answer that he would be asked in who wants to be a million year years later. Class Web also did an amazing job bringing up many themes in this book. The most prevalent one, the one that I took as the main theme of the book, was that your choices often dictate your future, not your luck. One example, the major symbolic example of this theme running throughout the book is of Ram's coin. He always flipped it to make a major decision in his life. Heads, he would go through with a decision. Tails, he would not go through with it. And this often led him to um, his next new major experience. His next new major experience, if he had ever rolled tails, he would have had a major tragedy occur during these major events or he would have faced death. However, this leads the leader to believe that Ram's life was always governed by luck or divine intervention. But in the end, the reader discovers that Ram's coin, his lucky coin, was in fact heads on both sides. Thus, he controlled his own future. And due to that, the events that led up to him winning a million dollars really, in fact, were of his own doing. And therefore, the novel really pushes and lets you decide whether it was faith 
that brought him his life or whether it was his own choice. And having faith in yourself and your own choices as represented by the main theme of the book, which was that your own choices dic- often dictate your future, not your luck. Slumdog Millionaire falls under the genre of inspirational fiction because it's all about having faith in the decisions and the choices you make that lead you to ultimately having a path set for you. Comparing Slumdog Millionaire to The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari by Robin Sharma, Slumdog Millionaire really did far better in popularity and sales, even though they're in the same genre. Slumdog Millionaire earned a 4 out of 5 star rating on Goodreads.com, while The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari only owned a 3.5 out of 5 star rating. So it really goes to show that even though they're in the same genre, Slumdog Millionaire really has its own style that makes it preferred and makes it stand out compared to other books in the same genre. The author was Vikas Swarup. He was a novelist and a diplomat who served in Turkey, UK, South Africa, Japan, and America. And he wrote Slumdog Millionaire in one summer after getting the idea of the story from a report in a local newspaper about children in India in Indian slums who had been using mobile phones and the internet and this had really shown the degradation of the class system. combine that with another article about an English major, Charles Ingram, who is accused and found guilty of cheating on the British version of the television show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So he really combined these two ideas and wrote a beautiful piece of work. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to read a dramatic passage and then explain the significance of how it affected me because I really felt that this one passage in the book had a lot of meaning behind it. <clears throat> Can I ask you a question? Smita asked me. Sure. That same evening when I first brought you home, before you told me your stories, you flipped a coin. Why? I was not sure whether to trust you. The coin toss was my decision-making mechanism. Heads, I would have told you everything. Tails, it would have been goodbye. As it turns out, it was heads, said Rao. So if it had been tails instead of heads, you wouldn't have told me your story. It wouldn't have come up as tails. You believe in luck so much. What's luck got to do with it? Here, take a closer look at the coin. I take out the one rupee coin from my jacket and hand it to her. She looks at it, flips it over, then flips it again. It, it's heads on both sides. Exactly. It's my lucky coin. But as I said, luck has got nothing to do with it. The context of this is that after winning the game show money and escaping the poverty he used to face, Ram is reconnected with, with Smita, his lawyer or long lost friend who he didn't recognize. And he shares his with her his lucky coin. Ram has flipped this coin throughout the book, which has defined moments that have led him to winning the game show money. <clears throat> he reveals to Smita that it was, in fact, not luck that guided his life, but instead his own decisions. One of these major decisions that has brought up this conversation is when Ram decides whether or not to trust Smita and tell her exactly how he knew the answers to the questions from the television show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And he Smita comments saying that um, if it had been tails, would you not have told me the truth? And Ram goes on to explain to her that it really was heads on both sides. So he already made the decision to tell her. And thus, it was his own choice that brought him where he was today. Now, the major significance I found was this. was that the main theme of the book is right here in this passage. The main theme of the book is that your future is often created by the actions you decide to take, and not by the greater being, not by greater being or luck. In this passage, Ram explains to Smita that he always made his important decisions in life by flipping his lucky rupee. Throughout the book, we see Ram make all of his life-changing decisions by flipping the said coin. If he ever flipped tails, the events that led to his success would have instead led to an early tragedy for Ram and his friends. The idea that flipping a coin and benefiting from it constantly, such as Ram did, suddenly gives the reader the impression that Ram's lucky coin was in fact not lucky. 
but heads on both sides. And thus, Ram consciously made his own decisions that led to his success. And that's when the impact of this passage really shifts the reader's interpretation of the main theme entirely, that instead of one of those traditional divine intervention, everything's already set in stone types of stories, it shows the reader how your own choices can have such a substantial effect on your life. To conclude, I would definitely recommend this book to any other readers out there who want not only a great read, but to learn a little bit more about other cultures and to broaden their view on society in general, because this book does an amazing job at that. And it really gets you in the heart where it matters and makes you feel emotions and compassion for many of the characters in the book because it was so well written. And definitely, it was a very interesting book. And it was useful to widen my perspective. And that's why I feel that a book with such a powerful effect has such a powerful meaning. This is why before we conclude, I would just like to go over some images of the novel Slumdog Millionaire. The first two pictures I have over here are a logo of society and India against corruption. It really speaks out to me because it shows me that people want to make a difference in India. It was from the reading the book, I saw how corrupt people were in India, how they just assumed things, judged based on stereotypes, abused power to take things for themselves. And I saw the good side of India as well, but that's why I really want to just expand that and that there is hope that people are trying to make differences and it really relates to the book because a lot of growing up as a street kid in India, an orphan street boy in India, under, growing up under the poverty line, it really puts you face to face with corrupt people and it puts you at the short of the end of the stick. So it really relates to Slumdog Millionaire because of the severe effects it has on many people's lives. The second two images I have are of faith over your choices. What I really believe this has to mean though is that Picasso is trying to get at having faith in your choices and how your choices really will govern what will happen and dictate what will happen in your future and in your and life. I'm just trying to say that it's not just having faith that's enough. You have to think about your life, think about your future, and think about what you want to write in your own story.